spring. We'll have to come again in the spring. Sounds good to me. We'll have to go do someplace else though. We're gonna run out of topics right here. We'll have to go north. If possible. We could fly this <laughs> 12 times in a row. We probably have different things we could talk about. There's so much going on here. Orchard here, there. These brown piles are where they've torn out trees. They're probably going to plant something else. Uh, Look like it's planted yet. This is a common, common enough thing that they do. So now we're coming out to the mouth of the coulee. So yeah, I, if, if you didn't kind of grasp what I was talking about with the Moses flood bar before, let's try it again. Now yeah. that we're flying in the direction. Sure that these five ice age floods are coming down. So we're going to fill this valley with water, number one. It's going to be brown, kind of chocolate milk looking water because it's picked up a bunch of soil and other things along the way. It's rolling a bunch of boulders and sand, uh, well, rolling a bunch of boulders and carrying a bunch of sand along the base of the flood. And it's high energy water. It's got enough speed that it's carrying everything. There's even some broken icebergs or broken pieces of ice that are floating on top of the water and they're carrying some boulders as well. So if we can picture all of that and traveling down this coulee, what's going to happen if this water carrying all this stuff gets dumped into the Columbia Valley? The answer is it's going to spread out. It's got, it suddenly has an open area to, to uh, dump into instead of being confined to this coulee. Yeah. It's like a river delta going into the ocean exactly. or into a, a lake. But at, but at a geologic yeah. snap of a finger, as yeah. opposed to gradually like that at the uh -huh. door, for instance, yes. Yeah. So that's why we're actually going to send some of the Ice Age flood water coming out of Moses Coulee. We're going to send it up towards Wenatchee. We're actually going to send it up the river oh, okay. valley as opposed uh -huh. to down the river, because this is happening so quickly. And again, I won't belabor it, but we've got this incredible flood bar here where all those rocks were dropped, the basalts of the Moses Coulee flood bar. Right. And so this area that we're flying over is actually higher than the level of the river, which yes. uh, you, I don't know if you can see it, it kind of drops down a little hill. We're gonna get back over there. Yeah, the river's had some luck since the Ice Age floods to cut through this natural dam and of course cut down to its, its, its elevation, its present elevation. Yep. And this up here is all um, uh, orchard trees, and a little bit further down, we're going to see some uh, vineyards all on this side. Do you have some customers here that you? No, I used to have one. I used to have one right under the wires. Boy, I'm so glad it didn't uh, rain uh, that uh, year because uh, I didn't want to fly. Oh yeah. I don't know how I was going to do that one. Get back over the river here. Right. So as we look across the river, we can kind of see some cliffs, kind of similar to what we just had at Moses Cooley, right? But then above that, it's that more mature, gradual landscape. So again, you can kind of figure out where the high water mark is just by looking at the slopes, how much bedrock is exposed. And, and uh, if you really want to get to, uh, down to it, you can actually make a map of where the ice rafted erratics are, where these boulders of white rock are now kind of uh, scattered up high. More of the milk guns here on the left, so everything just came out of Moses Cooley and got dumped, and those boulders have been sitting there for 16,000 years. Wow. Well, last time we went over those cliffs over there, let's yeah. go, uh, yeah, the last time that we did have any footage for that to prove that we did it. Yeah, Let's just go, because I know uh, you're excited about that. Well, that's a dramatic shot, and it's dramatic for a number of reasons. One of those lava flows, that main lava flow is called the Rosa flow, and it's some of these lava flows are great for forming columns. So there are beautiful rock columns that we'll see on occasion in this wall, but the other thing that's exciting Especially kind of out towards the end there of that little tail, there's this stuff called pillow basalt, which oh. tells us that lava is flowing into water and the lava is splitting into fingers as it goes into this temporary lake. So suddenly we're back long before the Ice Age flood. This is when the lavas were coming across 15 million years ago. 
Okay. But this is, oh, what a shot. What a shot, Maria, to see <laughs> these wonderful, can you see there's, it's kind of orangish in color, and then there's individual little, little uh, oh, kind of yeah. knobs of things. That's what we call pillow so basalt. Building a house oh, my there. God, a house. That's kind of weird up there. Sacrilege. <laughs> so that's great stuff in the pillow zone. Uh, but in general, I'm, I'm going to get paralyzed now with my mouth because there's about 72 things happening at once. I'll yeah. try to control myself. So we're going we're gonna to go out over West Bar, which is straight ahead of us on the other side of the river. And uh, the features here are a lot easier to see late in the afternoon or early in the morning when the light is low. Uh, you can really see the slopes, but I'm going to try to get down really low. There's nobody living out here. Is yeah. it possible just to spin to just for a second to sure. see this light colored gravel? So suddenly we have real white rocks, light grays and whites, and that's a clue that the Ice Age floods for this stuff came right down the Columbia River. Look at that. That's a pile this, of right sand here. and gravel. Yeah, sand and gravel that was dumped by the Ice Age floods, definitely from the north, not Moses Cooley because it's not the brown stuff now. It's, right. just, it's basically crushed up granite. White and gray over here. Yes, these are enormous flood bars, and our buddy Jay Harlan Brett was out here with this new railroad line to actually okay. cut through and see, see some of this stuff back in the 1920s. Okay. He's like, what in the world happened here? Where did all this stuff come from? And it's stuff like this that's often overlooked. Most people look at Dry Falls sure. and other places where you've got the huge canyons, but you also have to explain stuff like this. And if you go through all the different possibilities of how this stuff could have gotten here, the only thing that makes sense is an 18,000-year-old Ice Age flood with a bunch of sand and gravel being dropped in one of the eddy currents along the side. God, what a beautiful spot. Houses here, too. Do they know they're living on an 18,000-year-old pile of gravel from uh, the Ice Age flood? I don't think so. <laughs> Their life is probably better for it. That's okay. Yeah. Okay, we're going back, yeah. back to West Bar. Thanks for that request. Yeah, no, no worries. Actually, you can see the, the little uh, mounds, the ripples, a lot easier from this side. Yes, you can. So this low bench right below us right now is the last Ice Age flood that came down 13,300 years ago. Again, we get these dates from measuring cosmogenic ray exposure on these boulders. And then as soon as we go up onto this next bench, these are the famous Ice Age, oh, this is super exciting. I'm trying to keep my composure. <laughs> this is from an Ice Age flood that happened 14,000 years ago when the Okanagan ice sheet broke up into a million pieces and we created these ripples. Oh, I've never seen them like this, Maria. Yeah. This is, we're only, we're not that high. We're probably about 50 feet up right now. <laughs> Cruising wow. at 90 knots. Wow. Uh, these uh, the waves are actually pretty high. Look at that. So the space from, if you're having trouble with scale right now, it's a one football field from one crest to the next. It's 100 yards on average. Wow. And each ripple height is about 30 feet high. And you can see all the loose rocks that were dumped here as well. So this is not an idea. This is for sure backed up. You need X number of feet of vertical water. You need a certain speed to create these ripples, just like you see on a much smaller scale at a beach. So that's pretty cool down here. I wanted to talk about, on the other side of the river, um, these cliffs. Yeah. Because they're so good, and then we're going to climb up onto the Babcock Bench. We'll climb up over Crescent Bar, and then we'll Great. continue down that way. Great. We're doing a little zigzaggy route here. It's OK. Make a count. Well, the cameras are still working. <laughs> I'm sure they are. I have yeah. no doubt. I have faith in the whole thing, for oh, sure. Man. I hope so. So this is all about training your eyes as a Geology 101 student. So now the light is different for us. We obviously see the blue of the water. We see the green of the irrigated golf courses and things of Crescent Bar. We see the, the, the light gray piles of rocks. Those are the sands and gravels that were dropped by the Ice Age floods. And then we see the brown straight ahead which the layers are yeah, so distinct aren't here. they yeah so there's some petrified wood in there if we know where to look these are the stubborn grand Ronde lava flows that we were just looking at that made up that lowest bench at moses cooley this is a, a bunch of these guys that came out between 16.5 and 16.1 million years ago and these guys made it all the way from idaho to the oregon coast this is just one exposure of a bunch of these flows just going to climb up to the top. God, like you see the tops of the columns here. What a treat. 
And then notice how flat it is here. This is the top of the Grand Run because the lava layers that are above this were easy to erode. The floods just plucked them off easily. You can see there's a more gradual slope. Yeah. So I know you like the top of this Babcock bench, and I know why, because yeah. <laughs> it's so elaborate. Especially down uh, up a little bit yes. further, yes. there's uh, where they, the, um, the swirls cut into the rock and made the potholes. Absolutely. And if you look down, you can actually see the bushes are kind of growing in these little circular spots. Yes. But up ahead, it's a lot more easy to see. So the main point is there were, there were multiple Ice Age floods that came through this valley, and they weren't all the same size. So sometimes you had a huge flood that was deep enough to cross over the top of this bench that we're on. Some of the younger floods were smaller to make the giant current ripples, and that water this is high and dry during those flooding events. Oh yeah, look at this. Come on now. <laughs> I like it up here. Come on. Think of the power and energy of yeah. this water necessary to do this kind of damage. And the guy Jay Harvin Bretz was talking about this and publishing these papers and nobody believed him. They said it's all gradual river erosion. He's like, have you actually been out here to see this stuff? I mean, yeah. look at this. And, and you really, um, without being able to see it from the air, I right. don't know, I mean, I don't really know what he was seeing. Uh, but from the air, it's just really obvious. Well, that was his genius, if I may use that word, because he was seeing it all on ground level and piecing it together inch by inch, and only he could kind of see it all together in his mind. That's why, probably why it was such a hard sell. Exactly. Well, there's other reasons, too. There's tribalisms among well, yeah. geologists just like anybody else. And so there was turf stuff and reputations to protect and all that nasty stuff. Oh, yeah, so Dave Bishop's place here uh, at the mouth of uh, Potholes Coulee. Some people know it as Ancient Lakes. Also a flood story for sure. Okay, so we're going to go up. Uh, we'll go up the Ancient Lakes side of the okay. Potholes Coulee, and then we'll come down the Dusty Lake side.